Let's examine the pros and cons of transformers in a bit more detail. And I've made a list here of the pros and the cons, and we'll quickly go down each one. Going down the pros first, um, transformer by definition always gives you a balanced signal. I'll put a red question mark there because you can use an op amp which has got balanced in and balanced out. I call that pseudo balancing. Yeah, I know it, it, it can be a proper balance in and out. I'll come on to that in a later, in a later section. But by definition, a transformer is always balanced in and out. Well, the ins are important for a mic amp or the outs are important for a line amp. You always maintain ground, ground isolation. So each amplifier has got its own ground. And ideally, each amplifier, each unit within a desk has got its own power supply, which is transformer isolated from the mains. So you get total isolation and very, very little chance of outside interference. You know, taxis, mobile phones, what other nasties or whatever. Because even when you ground something, there's a lot of noise in, in, in the ground, in the earth. You know, everyone is, is, is chucking all their shit into the ground. Um, you can do some alarming experiments with, with an oscilloscope, be careful because of mains voltage, and just looking at the difference between two ground and sockets in your house. But do be careful because you're dealing with, you might be dealing with over 440 volts here. Slight like cock up here, hum pick up. That actually should be down there. Come on to that in a minute. Gain. By altering the ratio of, say, the. By altering the ratio of the primary to the secondary, you can build up useful gain. For instance, if your microphone impedance is 200 ohms, you can easily build that up to 10k ohms in your transformer and get a very useful 560B worth of additional gain for free. You can also change impedance very readily in a transformer. This is another example. We're going from 200 ohms to 600. We can go from 10k down to 600 and so on. I'll come on to that section in a minute. Let's look at the cons of transformers. Well, they're expensive. If you design an op-amp circuit uh, without a transformer, you've saved the entire cost of the transformer. Whereas a decent transformer these days in UK pounds is between 50 and 90 pounds. And in a decent desk, you may have, I don't know, 50, 50 of them. That's a lot of additional money. It's also a lot of additional weight because transformers are heavy. Come down here, down to hum pickup. They're very susceptible to picking up hum, mainly mains hum. So you have to mount the transformer in a mu metal case. That's a special kind of metal that um, isolates um, hum from your transformer. They're expensive. Just the case is expensive. And also the case adds more weight because the case is heavy. Another disadvantage is without a transformer, you get no ground isolation because <coughs> the signal's not balanced. No ground isolation, RFI, radio frequency interference. Every piece of wire in every piece of equipment is actually an aerial, as we say here, or as they say in the rest of the, rest of the world, an antenna. It's there to pick up any nasties that are going on and feed them into your signal. An argument all often made about the use of transformers is you get a phase change. If you have a single get into an amplifier, what comes out isn't exactly in phase with what went in. Many arguments about this. I personally think that one can worry too much about phase change. If you've got a 30, 30 channel desk, you've got 30 mic input transformers, phase change, you've got 30 line out transformers, 30 EQ transformers possibly, phase change, phase change, phase change, 
it doesn't matter because they're all the same. You do have to be a little bit careful that if, say, you've got uh, two overhead drum mics and you've got a lot of EQ and limiting and compression in one mic and nothing in the other, which I accept you wouldn't normally do, but if you were to finish up in, 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 in that state, you'd be in a further mess because the, f the phase of the microphone that's been through all this extra gear will be slightly delayed compared to the microphone that had no other EQ or uh, compressors in it. If you're not careful, um, you can have an output transformer oscillate, particularly when you're using feedback. And again, there's another whole little talk about feedback. Coming back to expensive and heavy, every insert point to maintain the integrity of your ground has to have a transformer coming out and a transformer going back in again. You might well be using a limiter, a compressor, EQ, reverb, whatever, that doesn't have transformers in it. It has a balanced input from an op amp, a balanced output from an op amp. And to maintain your ground integrity between your desk and the external device, you need transformers. Again, a 30 channel desk, each, each channel and insert, that's another 60 transformers. Another 60 transformers. And maybe 50 pounds each. <coughs> transformers also are difficult to source. They're only about five, five to seven reputable manufacturers of audio transformers around the world. Let's do a bit more detail about considerations about transformers and things that we have to decide in advance. The first is a winding ratio, that is the ratio between the primary and the secondary, whether it's going to go up or down. A microphone transformer will transform up, a bridging transformer might well transform down. The laminations. We have to be very careful with the laminations we use because of what's called saturation. Um, the core of an audio transformer is generally mu metal. Now mu metal saturates. That means that if that if the metal laminations there saturate, they will no longer accurately transform uh, your signal from the primary to the secondary. Another thing to note about mu metal uh, laminations is never ever connect any DC voltage across the primary, or indeed the secondary, but the primary in particular, because then you could permanently magnetise the laminations in your transformer. And not to put too fine a point on it, your transformer is then buggered. I've tried demagging a transformer uh, and there is a way of doing it, but it's not worth the effort. Air gap. The laminations are sometimes like this. They're called e-laminations, and I will uh, I will find some pictures, not for this video, for a later video when we go into transformers in even more depth to show you what the uh, different types of laminations are. The other type is where, so those are called E laminations, those are called T laminations. Laminations sort of fit together like, either like that or like that. And the bobbin is there and the windings um, are obviously on the bobbin. With e-laminations, if you think you're going to get saturation um, and you're winding your own transformers, which is still possible because you can still get laminations and bobbins and frames and things, is to separate and put one layer of cigarette paper 
So there, you know the roll-ups that you do? You might well use roll-ups for purposes other than what I use them for. I stick one in, one in there um, and that will, that has a disadvantage of it slightly reduces the transformer's efficiency, but it does dramatically postpone the point at which saturation occurs. Going back to laminations, there are several types of lamination. There's uh, silicon iron, there's mu metal, and there's radio metal. I'm not sure you can still get radio metal. We used to use radio metal in the in the early uh, A range desks. Radio metal has a, the advantage that radio metal has over mu metal is radio metal is less efficient than mu metal, but saturates at a much higher voltage. Let's look now at saturation that I've just mentioned. I've got three diagrams here of the common way in which transformers can be used. Going back to the early days of uh, uh, amplifiers, this is called a single-ended output. I've got a valve there, tube, and you'll notice here that there's a transformer, but also notice that DC for the anode flows through the primary. If that valve is taking a lot of current, which it probably will do if you want much power out, then there's going to be considerable DC within that primary, which can cause the laminations to saturate. The way around this is either to use a very big transformer, I'm talking one about that big, or an air gap in there with the cigarette paper. A way around this is to use what's called a push-pull output, and here again I'm using tubes as an example, that you have, the, you have the signal come in through what's called a phase splitter. There's the input, and this valve here will amplify the positive bits, and that bit will amplify the negative bits. And the phase is effectively reversed in the transformer primary because the centre tap of that transformer, that's the centre of the windings, goes to the supply voltage. This means that the DC in that part of the primary is out of phase with the DC in that part of the transformer. And so ideally they'll balance themselves out. And so you get very little residual DC going through the primary of the transformer which is fantastic because you can now have a small, a very small transformer, that big, and probably no need for an air gap. Is this too good to be true? Well, yes it is actually, because there's a nasty thing called crossover distortion, and crossover distortion is where when those two when the positive and negative parts of the signal are combined in here, they don't actually match up. An exaggerated example of crossover distortion is if you've got something like this. And there's a little step in there, and that's crossover distortion. Now crossover distortion is again very unpleasant. It's rather like the um, overload distortion where the sine wave gets flattened and crosses and uh, gets cut off, I was talking about earlier on. That's the same kind of nasty distortion. And dear Rupert Neve is particularly adverse to crossover distortion. That's why in his desks he always uses this technique here, which is called single-ended, but he uses a very large transformer there. I'm quite happy with the lack of crossover distortion um, on our desks, unless you overdrive them like mad. If you overdrive them, then you will get crossover distortion, sure. But if you stay below plus 24 dBm, uh, you're perfectly safe. 